There are two games I haven't been able to put down this past month. At a first glance, they do look pretty different, but they both released in February. I've been playing them a lot, so here's the video. One is actually three separate games, and the other is a digital deck of playing cards, but the remastered Tomb Raider trilogy and Balatro are both very special to me and have comforted me and kept me sane through a cold winter. I played this one's demo for over 10 hours when it came out, had to force myself to put it down so I could rest up for the full game because it's that good and Tomb Raider takes me back in time before I was even born and is perfectly, frustratingly, and brilliantly retro in all the right ways, but is a little easier on the eyes than the originals. Honestly, I just wanted to talk about these two, but not necessarily review them in full, just gush about how much fun I've been having with them. We're only two months into the year, so I know my title is maybe a bit unrealistic with all the games still planned for 2024, but it's funny to me that these games released so close together and are so different from each other. The people do agree with me though, especially when it comes to Balatro. 98% positive reviews, cruising towards 10,000 total reviews after just one week. Probably because once you boot the game up, it casts a magic poker spell upon you and you're unable to stop thinking about cards in your daily life while you're sleeping, you just need to play Balatro. In just one day, the game racked up over 40 years of playtime. As I'm writing this, more than 30,000 people are currently playing it, and guess what? The solo developer doesn't even play poker or deck builders, and this game is the definition of an amazing poker deck builder. It's as challenging as it is hypnotic, and so far I've only won the game once, but that's okay because I'm having fun. Tomb Raider is also pretty difficult, but at least there's a quick save feature so I can do dumb things with a little bit more confidence. This game is an absolute gold mine for dying in really stupid ways, and you can even unlock an achievement for dying in every way possible. And all the achievements are pretty fun to pull off. Stuff like do a handstand on top of the Sphinx's head, finish the assault course in under a minute 20. Palatro has some fun achievements too, mostly related to beating the game in different ways and unlocking all the cards. I'm gonna be playing for a while, I think. And the music. The soundtracks in both of these titles capture their vibes perfectly. The store page for Balatro puts it best. Let the synthwave soundtrack wash over you. Wind down, escape the daily grind, and prepare to enter the ultimate roguelike flow state. And the music in Tomb Raider? It's pretty simple, almost feels empty, much like these ancient places you're in but also grand, mysterious, forbidden, dangerous even. And man, the level design. You wouldn't think they could do much with basically what are just giant blocks, but the amount of stuff that's hidden in these levels, you just have to play it to believe it. I'd say that both these games require a fair bit of patience, this one for obvious reasons. Platforming is slow and methodical, it's easy to get lost in some of these places or just completely walk past an objective. And in this one, your run can end in a split second if you're not paying attention. But once you get to anti 4 or 5, you know you have a good deck. It's all about learning how to best use each joker card and finding fun and powerful synergies to exploit. But anyways, I just beat the first Tomb Raider game and have only won Balatro once, so it's safe to say that I have some work left to do. I always like having games like these that you can pick up for a quick run or two or three, or maybe progress a little further into a level, find a few secrets, and then come back to finish it later. There's no rush, it's easy to start and stop, something to play during that weird time after you get a shower, but it's still only 9.22 and you don't feel like doom scrolling anymore. So thank you to these two games for keeping me company, and you can bet they'll both make an appearance in my favorite games of 2024 list at the end of the year. If you'd like to help me branch out and play even more games, or discover some new gems for yourself, I have both a Steam Curator page and a Patreon newsletter, both places you can go to hear some quick thoughts on both old and new games that I think are pretty cool. 
and I think you're pretty cool too.